Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today is Random Acts of Kindness Day. So I thought I'd just give you some free content as a kind gesture. Yeah. So as some of you may know, I, uh, since 2015, I've been helping people reverse all kinds of health conditions, some of which people have just kind of accepted as a way of life. Like they thought it was just kind of their thing, or something they're predisposed to having. And I've helped people reverse these things. Things like eczema and psoriasis and IBS, constipation, digestive problems, migraines, prediabetes, type 2 diabetes, arthritis, gout, Parkinson's in one case, obesity, lots of different stuff, all by helping them get to the root cause, which is really what the whole book is about. And that's what my coaching is all about as well. So the main thing, the main root cause is all about chronic inflammation. And there's a number of reasons for it to happen in the body, but it's typically the root cause of many, many different things. So I just thought that you know what inflammation is. Simply put, it's your immune system under attack. There's different types, but in its simplest form, it's your immune system under attack. Something enters your body, the immune system doesn't recognize, and it goes into a state of defense. It's a very healthy immune response. But when it happens again and again and again and again and again, it leads to a chronic situation, and it display, your body displays all kinds of symptoms depending on your genetic code. So the cool thing is, it doesn't actually matter if you have a genetic predisposition for anything, what matters is the environment that you keep in the body, which will depend or determine whether that gene is expressed or not, whether it's turned on or not. So the science of epigenetics, which has been around since 20, 2005, says that it's all about the environment we keep in our bodies, which determines whether a gene is turned on or not. So in other words, what we put in our bodies, how much we move or not, how we manage our emotions like stress, big thing, or chronic negative emotions, or uh, how we release trapped emotions and trauma from the body, exposure to environmental toxins and that kind of stuff. All of this stuff determines the environment that we keep in our bodies. So we have the power in apparently 95% of all illness and disease to override these genes that we may have, which may cause some kind of genetic predisposition. So it doesn't matter if you come from a whole family of diabetes or a whole family of cancer or high blood pressure, it doesn't actually matter. All that matters is that you keep the environment in your body for that not to happen. So it might mean do the opposite to what your parents did. For example, it might not be that, but it might be. So what we put in our bodies, how much we move, how much we manage emotions, expo uh, the uh, environment, toxins, that kind of stuff. So what are the main things that trigger inflammation? By the way, it's not just physical, it's not just what we eat. It can be the emotional state that triggers the inflammatory response in the body as well. So did I just say that right? It could be how we manage emotions, like stress that causes the inflammatory effects in the body. So. Food-wise, you'll be amazed at how many people can reverse or start to experience benefits by taking out these two inflammatory culprits. One is the modern hybridized wheat grain. It's been altered a lot since its origin and it's gone through a process called, process called mutagenesis. It's not GMO, similar, but it's, it's not. It's basically been mutated. So the original grain has been mutated so farmers can yield more in less time. There's more proteins added to it. There's about 14 different proteins now added to this wheat grain, which means it's been mutated so the farmers can yield more in less time. So the, the agricultural industry can make a lot of money, but it's not so good for our gut. You'd be amazed at how many people can experience benefits by taking out gluten from their diet. Another one, and also it tears the gut lining. It can tear the gut lining, leaky, uh, causing leaky gut which is the root cause of almost every autoimmune disease, which is when this semi-permeable membrane in your gut seeps molecules through it and it ends up into your bloodstream. Like other things can seep through the semi-permeable membrane in your gut lining and it creates an inflammatory response in the body and the immune system kind of attacks itself. So that's pretty much the root cause of all autoimmune diseases, leaky gut. Um, so that's a, one of the reasons why I want to take out gluten. And the other one is cow's milk. And without talking about a whole day on cow's milk, it's just worth noting that we're not baby cows. So that's 
the main reason why many people benefit from not drinking cow's milk. Unless you're a baby cow, chances are you're not if you're watching this, unless you're a very intelligent baby cow. Chances are you're gonna get benefits by taking out cow's milk, preferably all dairy. But first of all, cow's milk can have a massive benefit on the gut and any kind of inflammatory symptom your body is showing to you. On that particular point, I like the idea that we don't have illness or disease. Our body is presenting to us symptoms. That's, that's it. It's like the body's genius, beautiful, intelligent system communicating with us that something is out of balance beneath the surface. And if you have any kind of skin condition, whether it's eczema or psoriasis or acne or dermatitis or rosacea, that's your body's first communication with you indicating that something's out of balance. So it's not kind of a, an opportunity to go and get a drug. It's an opportunity to just have a look and say, right, what's causing this imbalance in the body? Is it what I'm eating? Is it because I'm inactive? Is it because I'm suffering from stress and I need to have a, pay attention to that? Maybe I've got some habits that aren't serving me, that kind of stuff. There's a big uh, emotional part to all of this. My arm's getting really tired. So, yeah, symptoms, massively powerful to listen to. Um, and they're so intelligent, the body is so intelligent, the body has its own intelligence. And when we listen to these symptoms, instead of you know, doing what we're kind of led to believe is the right thing to do, we can create healing in the body by just changing a few things. Sometimes it's just one or two things that you change and you have this incredible long lasting effect. <laughs> People have suffered from eczema, for example. I've got one of my main programs, is eczema because I've had my own journey with eczema. I, uh, for the best part of 30 years, I had pretty bad eczema and I was always given steroid creams, very, very harmful for the skin, or antibiotics, or really terrible moisturizers like Diprobase from my doctor. And even as a teenager, I got very, very suspicious about this, thinking, why do I always get this same treatment and it always just comes back? Something's not right here. So uh, 20, years, 20 years later, I realized what the problem was. <laughs> so I'm not gonna go into this quite yet, but um, there's a reason why doctors aren't really as wonderful people they are. Uh, they're not recommending methods to heal the body because they're not actually trained that way. Um, that's all we need to know, really. Well, we, we really get to understand the history behind it, which is actually in my book and all over the internet, but it's, uh, it's good to know. So the body is designed to heal, it will heal, and it's really about the environment that we keep in our bodies, which determines whether or not the body will heal itself or not. But it's constantly trying to heal. It's constantly wanting to be in a state of balance. It always wants to be in a state of balance. And when it comes to con common illness or chronic disease, there's nothing the body won't heal, nothing. In fact, I'd go beyond that, but um, for the purpose of this, I'm not. I'm just gonna say the body is an immensely powerful self-healing machine and it will heal when you give it what it needs and you take out what's harming it. It just means kind of discovering and educating yourself a little bit on all the stuff that is a, a nutrient in some form for the body and what, could, what is some kind of toxin. So we need to just take out the toxins, put in the nutrients, manage our emotions, get active, really become familiar with what might be causing the body harm remove exposure from it, and then crazy awesome stuff happens. But yeah, in terms of the ease that this can be done, it might just start off with one or two changes in a diet that can make all the difference. And uh, namely gluten dairy, sometimes it's really good to go grain-free, sometimes it's good to go majority plant-based. I'm majority plant-based paleo, which means, although I would say about 80 to 90%, which means majority plant diet, grain-free most of the time. Um, people have reversed autoimmune diseases often do paleo and ketosis. The ketogenic diet is when you put your body into 24 seven fat burning mode. It takes three to five days to get there. But once you're there, it's one of the most anti-inflammatory ways to live. It can starve cancer cells to death because cancer's number one fuel is sugar. And it obviously is not gonna work in 100% of cases, but it's, uh, it has been very effective in reversing cancer as well. So paleo and ketosis are very effective. Um, vegan, although grain-free vegan is the best, um, or certainly gluten-free vegan is one of the best. So there's a number of different dietary methods and there's all kinds of ways. Whatever, whatever works for you, anti-inflammatory is what you're looking for and that's what's going to help you on the nutrition side of things. 
and then emotional is uh, a big one because we need to change our habits often we need to change our perception i'll leave you this this i'll leave you with this one little gem which is the definition of stress according to a guy called mihaly Csikszentmihalyi, who wrote a book called flow living at the peak of your abilities he said stress is an internal response to external strains and what he means is it's our perception of the world around us which has the potential to create this thing called stress in our bodies it's not the stressful thing itself we can change suffering we can end suffering by changing the meaning that we give to things in an instant but we give meanings to things based on our own stories from the past from our own upbringing from um, culture from life <laughs> we attribute meanings to things immediately because most of us are in reactive state all the time but we can change suffering we can end suffering by changing the meaning that we give to things and i love the example of um oh, i can see the moon behind me you can't see it uh, i love the example of uh, people two people in a in a traffic jam and there might be they might be both late for work. One person is completely zen. They'll let their, their boss know that they're gonna be late and they just chill out. They just sit in the car, listen to music, have some fun, maybe listen to a podcast, maybe the Vitality Secret podcast, and they're totally chilled out, totally zen. Another person might be late for work and they'll be effing and blinding, causing road rage, cutting people up. You know what's happening to their body? Not very good things. High blood pressure, when you get stressed, your DNA tightens up, all kinds of stuff. You release all the stress hormones. The point is, two people can be faced with the same external circumstance and behave very differently. So when we change our perception of anything that's happening around us, we can change the impact that stress has on our immune system, on inflammation, anything like that, which is a very, very powerful tool. It's one of the best things you can ever learn, in fact. <laughs> as well as heart-brain harmony, which is tuning in your brain and your heart together to work together to create harmony, to create healing, to stimulate uh, healing hormones, to heat, to stimulate uh, the immune system for six hours, heart-brain harmony. Yeah, big thing. The heart has 40,000 sensory neurites, brain-like cells in the heart, discovered in 1991. When we create harmony between the head and the brain, we can create amazing stuff in the body. There's no need for the body to go into a state of immunosuppression when we know this massively awesome tool. I've been talking for a long time and my right arm is really, really hurting. It's not actually, it's, I'm exaggerating. It's a little bit painful. Happy Sunday, happy, uh, what was the day again? Random Acts of Kindness Day. Uh, happy Sunday from the, the burbs of London, Hertfordshire, and by the River Chess. Have a lovely Sunday wherever you are in the world and uh, hit me up if you have any questions. And share. If you found this useful, share. Thank you.